Hi, this is Trisha Taylor with Fun and Easy Crochet. I am so excited to be here with you today to be able to start our new X's pattern together. I'm what we're going to need to start this pattern. We are going to need some worsted weight yarn today for this project. I use the Premier Everyday yarn, um, Snow White color. If you want to follow the color scheme, the number is ED. 100-01 if you need the color code and that's the yarn we'll be using next you are going to need your crochet hook I've got the eye crochet hook 5.5 um, millimeters for you guys to use you're going to need your scissors to cut up by when you're finished so that you can cut it from the skein of yarn and next you're going to need the tapestry needle and that will be to weave in your ends. So those are the materials you need. Finally, you're going to want to have the pattern. If you want the pattern, you can go ahead and go to the fun and easy crochet um, dot com and go to the excess section and under patterns and there you can download the free pattern if you join the free crochet group. So we'd love to have the, you join and have the pattern. So Let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start by creating our slip knot. So go ahead and create a slip knot. Once you have your slip knot created, get to make sure it's on your hook and make sure the tension's right. Again, we don't want it too tight because it makes it hard to work into the stitches when it's too tight. So we are going to start by chaining a total of 37 chains and then we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and start chaining. To chain, you yarn over, you pull through the loop. Again, yarn over, pull through the loop. There's two chains. Go ahead and yarn over, pull through the loop, yarn over, and pull through the loop. There's four chains. Again, to count your chains, you've got the V. For each stitch, you have a little V, so there would be one V. Here's two Vs there. Here's three V's and then the fourth V is there by the chain. So we've got four stitches on our hook. So we're going to do a total of 37. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And while you're doing this, you want to make sure that your stitches are even and so that they're uniform and it'll just give your pattern a nice look if they're even rather than having some tight and some loose. So 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And I do tend to count a lot out loud because it helps me to be able to know where I'm at. So I'm at 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, get some more yarn, 34, 35, 36, 37. So I've got my 37 chains on there. So once you have all 37 chains, what we're going to do is we're going to skip the first chain and we're going to chain, do a single crochet in the second chain. So we're gonna skip this first one right here and we're gonna work into the second one right here. So go ahead and insert your hook. And we're just doing a single crochet. So once you insert your hook, oops. When you insert your hook, you should have the two loops on the top. So see how I have two loops before I only had one. So insert your hook. We're going to yarn over. We're going to pull through, pull up a loop, giving us the two loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops, leaving one loop. So there's our first single crochet made. We're going to go into the second stitch. So we're going to go in, yarn over, pull up a loop. You've got the two loops. We're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. We'll do that one more time slow for everybody. So we'll go into the next stitch. See the two loops over top. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. That gives us two loops here. We're going to yarn over and pull through two. Okay. So we're just going to do this across. We're just doing the single crochet. We're going to have a total of 36 single crochet. And this is because we skipped that first chain. That's why we're not having 37. 
So we'll have a th total of 36 single crochet once we get through this row. As I'm working on this, I want to bring out that this March is actually the National Crochet Month for, cro for this art. And I'm so excited for it to be the National Crochet Month. And I'm excited to have started this Afghan at about the right time to create, um, to go into this month so that we can join together and celebrate this month. Um, I would love to know how you are planning on celebrating this month. If you would love, I would love to hear that by having you comment in the comments below. Just tell me how you're going to celebrate this month. Um, if you're got anything planned. If not, what some ideas are that you might have. Um, there are a few ideas that I have for this month. First off, some of my ideas are learning a new stitch or a new technique. There are so many different styles of, of stitches, of techniques that you can do. You've got the Tunisian crochet where you put all of the stitches on what your crochet hook. I know that doesn't explain it very well, but it's, it's just an interesting way to do um, crochet, a totally different way than what we are doing it now. And next, you could do tapestry crochet. Um, that's always a fun new technique that you can learn, a new way to do your crochet. And some of the stitches that you could learn, you could learn how to do puff stitches or popcorn stitches. There's front post and back post crochet stitches, which I'm actually going to be going over some front post and back post stitches today with you. So that'll be fun if you don't know how to do them, we can learn together. And I'm also going to be going over some front and back loop, or some back loops, I'm not doing front loop. Sorry, but back loop stitches as well. So where we're working in the back loop of each stitch. So that's another um, new technique that you can um, learn is working in the back loops and learning how that affects your work. Um, so it's always good to learn new, new things, I feel like. It stretches us and it gives us the opportunity to grow. Okay, I'm coming here to the last stitch. Now that we're at the last stitch, sorry, as my hands go out of the shot. Now that we're at the last stitch, we're going to go ahead and chain one and turn our work. And then we're going to single crochet in each stitch across. We're going to single crochet in each stitch across for the next three rows. So we'll have a total of four single crochet. All right, James Taylor, he says, I'm going to celebrate National Crochet Month by learning to do chain and single stitch. That is awesome, James. I am excited that you're going to learn how to do that. Um, I have actually have some videos on my YouTube channel. It's um, Fun and Easy Crochet, and you can go there and learn. I've got both the chain and single crochet stitches that you can learn from. So here we're going to just do single crochets across each stitch. So I do have some basic um, videos on my YouTube channel that I created actually four years ago that you can go back and look at. There's a lot of fun patterns and whatnot on there. Um, I just want to remind you how you know that you're make, going into each stitch. Just go ahead and follow your back ridge. You can see how it like bumps over. There, each back ridge bumps. So that just like, guides you into the next stitch. So then you're not missing any stitches. And it is a good um, habit to get into counting your stitches on occasion after you finish a row just to make sure that you're not dropping any stitches and so that you make sure that you have the total number of stitches and in our case that would be 36 so we'll just continue to work sorry I didn't pull out my yarn beforehand and I keep, it keeps getting caught so if you'll bear with me while I Pull that out on occasion. Alright, so another new idea that I have that you guys can do to celebrate this month is to teach somebody how to crochet. You can um, teach them by using one of my YouTube videos if you want, or there's a really great site, it's um, craftyarncouncil.com. 
and on Craft Yarn Cancel, they actually it's they have a program called Each One Teach Two program, and that program um, they encourage each person to teach two people how to crochet, and they give you a crochet a technique guide a teaching guide sorry, they give you a teaching guide that you can utilize to help teach somebody, or uh, they also give you. Um, a free crochet pattern that you can use as you teach somebody how to crochet. And so that's a good resource you can use if you really want to go out and teach somebody how to crochet. You can teach a friend, you can um, teach um, a family member, or if you're really ambitious, you can get a group together and teach that whole group how to do some crochet. I've done some teaching. I love to teach people how to crochet. It's a great way to relax, um, to relieve some of the tensions that you feel. It just it helps to it helps you to be able to progress in life. I feel like at least it helps me to progress because I'm able to move forward and without the tensions the the every and the stress of the everyday lives that brings my way. Now that doesn't say that all the stress goes away. It just means it's I get some relief from it. Okay, I'm at the end of that row. We're going to go ahead and chain one and start our third row of single crochet. So just go in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And we're just going to do this a single crochet in each chain, in each stitch across. And then we'll have one more row of single crochet and then we'll go from there. So it's interesting on video I find that I I don't know if it's tension in me or what but I find that I crochet a little bit tighter than what I do um, off of video. I don't know if it's because of the trying to do this with the camera in my way of my hands and so it makes it a little bit different but it's just kind of an interesting thing that I've noticed. All right. Back to the topic of my ideas of what to do for this month, crochet um, month and the celebrating it. So again, you can teach somebody that was, I'm going to repeat the place where you can go for that guide. It is, or for the teaching guide, yes, it's craftyarncouncil.com. So go there if you want to teach somebody and to get guides. That'll be awesome. And then and then after that, you can start a new project. I am thinking of starting a new project. You can go to Ravelry.com. It's spelled R-A-V-E, sorry, R-A-V-E-L-R-Y. And Ravelry provides, it's a platform that has a lot of different patterns for crochet as well as knit. But you can um, make the search be for just crochet so that you're just seeing the crocheted projects. And it's a great way, place to find projects. There's both free and paid projects. And you can join Ravelry for free. It's not even, it doesn't cost you anything to get on there. Um, so that's a lot of fun that you can do with the Ravelry. And then you can also, um, and find patterns there. And with that, you could even start your own crochet along with some friends. You can choose a free pattern and you guys can all get together and do a crochet along and gather as a group of ladies or gentlemen and get together and crochet. And then the other thing that you can do is join an online community. So we've got, okay, before I go there, I'm at the end of this row. So we're going to chain one and we're going to work our last single crochet row. So we're going to just insert our hook in the first stitch, pull up and pull, get the two loops, yarn over and pull through the both loops. That creates the, your first single crochet and we're going to just do that across. All right, so you can join an online community. Online communities are great. You're able to, you are able to, um, have a place to go to enjoy yarning with other people or crocheting, whichever you'd prefer to say. And then there you can um, 
yeah, meet new people and, and create new friendships. There are places you can join a community. You can go ahead and join my fun and easy crochet. You can join my Facebook page. You can join, you can join on my um, website at funandeasycrochet.com. And you can also enjoy um, groups or clubs out there. Um, one that you can join is the Crochet Guild of America, the CGOA um, is what they call it for short. That would be a great place to go and join. I know that right now they have a crochet along. Um, they're creating the, I gotta look, the button up neck cozy. So you could go and join there. Or like I said, you can just continue to crochet this af again with me and join and continue this journey of creating this with me as well. So. Sorry, I'm coming up to the end. I've just got a few more stitches here. And then we're going to go into the actual pattern of this. We're, we've just created the border. And I know that this one has four single crochet um, rows versus the last pattern that I did for the border. And that is just because this next area is going to make it look like it's still three single crochet. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually chain three. And this is going to count as our um, first double crochet from here on out. So each chain three is our first double crochet. So make sure that the chain three is the first double crochet. Then we're going to do double crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to do that by yarning over. Insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over. Pull up a loop. You can see we have three loops here. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, leaving two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through those two. We're going to do one more regular double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the next stitch. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, giving us our three loops. Yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two. So that gives us our three double crochet, our chain three, and then our two double crochet. So next we're going to be working in we're going to be creating a double crochet, but we're going to be doing it in the front of the post. So we're going to do a front post double crochet. Now the post is just this um, right here. You can see the stitches made and on the sides. So you can go in there and there, and that would be the post in between those two. So in order to do the front post double crochet, we're going to yarn over. We're going to enter into the side of the post from the front go behind it and enter on the other side of the post. And you can see our post is right there in front of our hook. So then we're gonna double crochet and pull through. Then we'll double crochet two, or sorry, pull through, a, pull the loop through two loops and then pull through the other two loops. And that creates your first front post double crochet. I'm gonna pull that out and go over that again for you. Okay. So again, you can see our post is right here. It's in between the stitches so you can see where the back ridge is right here. That back ridge is basically where the post is. So we're going to yarn over. We're going to go in on the right side of the back ridge. We're going to go under the post and we're going to come up on the other side of where the back ridge is. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's our front post made. Then after we're doing that, we're going to work the next 28 stitches in the back loop of the stitch. So we're only going to be, instead of having two loops over your crochet hook, like you normally do when you go into a stitch, so you can see my two little loops there, we're only going to have one because we're going to work in the back loop. So here you can see the V's of each stitch. This one, this loop right here, this side of the V is your front loop. This side is your back loop. So we're going to be working in that back loop only. So we'll only have one loop over our hook when we insert. So we are going to yarn over. We're actually going to skip the first stitch 
and we're going to go into the second stitch. So yarn over, go into the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. There's our double crochet that is created. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create another double crochet, but we're going to do it in, oh, sorry, I realized I just did not make that in the back loop. So let's pull that out really quick. Because remember, we're working in the back loop, so we're going to yarn over. Don't go into the stitch like I did. You can see there's the front loop right there, and here's the back loop. So we're going to go in the back loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You're going to see that it's going to really pull that up. That's how I knew I hadn't done it, because it didn't pull that stitch up. And that's going to be okay. That's going to look good in the end, so don't worry about that. But you can see the stitch that we skipped. What we're going to do is do a double crochet in that back loop. So we're going to yarn over, go in the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's going to create a nice little X here for us. And we're just going to continue doing that. We're going to skip the next stitch, go into the next, the back loop of it. We're going to yarn over and pull up and do a double crochet, pull through two, pull through two. And then we're going to go back to the skipped stitch. We're going to cross over the front of the double crochet just made. We're going to go in the back loop. We're going to pull up a, a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So we're just working with double crochets on this and we're working in the back loop. We're going to skip the first stitch, go into the second stitch. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Go back to the skipped stitch, working in the back loop. Go in, pull up a loop, and then create the double crochet. Okay, so you can see that's making a nice pattern there for us. It's going to, it's also the reason why we're working in the back loop, so you can see that we're creating a nice border here at the bottom for our pattern. So, and the front post and the back post double crochet that we'll be doing is also creating a nice little separation from the border. So we're going to skip this stitch, go into the second stitch, working in the back loop, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Go back to the skip stitch, working in the back loop, double crochet, skip the next stitch, go into the back loop of the next, do a double crochet, Go back to the skip stitch, working in the back loop, and pull up and do the double crochet. We're just going to do this across to the end. So I'm just going to hurry through this so we can get to the end and then we will, we're going to do it to the last four stitches. So once we get to the last four stitches, we're going to stop this pattern and then we're going to do a front post double crochet and then three regular double crochets. And that's creating our border. So we're just going to continue these X's. Oops. And once we're going to have, I believe, 14 X's. Let me, yes, we're going to have 14 X's once we're done with this um, row. And then we'll just have like the two front post double crochet and we'll have the three, well, the chain three and then uh, five double crochets. So we're just going to continue this pattern where we skip the stitch, go into the next stitch, cross over front, go back to the skip stitch, and do another double crochet. Okay, so we have one more of these to do. All right, now we have four stitches left. We're going to work in that front post again. You can see the front post right here. We're going to yarn over. We're going to go on the right side of the front post, remember, right next to that back ridge right there. We're going to go behind the front post and come up on the other side. 
then putting our post in front of our hook. That's why it's called a front post front post stitch because we're putting the foot post in front of the hook. Then we're going to create our double crochet. I'll go through that one more time because I know we're not doing as many of these so we don't go through it as much. So we're going to yarn over, go into the right side of the ridge, go behind the post and then come up on the other side. We're going to yarn over, pull up the loop and then complete our double crochet. And then we're just going to do three double crochet right here. So there's one. There's two. And then three. Okay, now we're going to turn our work and we're going to do our chain three, which remember that counts as our first double crochet on the row. So one, two, three. Then we're going to just do two regular double crochets so go into the next stitch and do a double crochet go into the next stitch and do a double crochet okay so when you do a, the front post what we're doing is we're making it poke out on the other side you can see kind of here how this one pokes out from the other it creates a nice texture there um, we want that texture to stay on that side so what we're going to do here instead of doing a front post we're going to do a back post and the back post you can see the post here so the back post we're actually going to work behind and we're going to go behind and through that through the right side there because we want the post to be behind the be behind the crochet hook so see how the post is no longer in front like the front post crochet. So let's go over that again. So we're going to go behind and go in through right next to that post. We're going to go in front of that post and back through the other side, loop over and pull through those. And that's going to create your front, your back post double crochet. We'll go over it one more time. Oops. We're going to yarn over. We're going to come up to the right side of that post come in front, come out the back, yarn over, pull up the loop, and then just finish off your double crochet, pulling through the two loops and then through the last two loops. And that's just gonna create a nice ridge on the other side. And now we're going to just work in the regular stitches. So we're not doing back loops anymore and we're just going to continue making the X's. So we're going to skip the next stitch, go into the next, double crochet, then we're going to cross over front, go back to the skip stitch, go in, pull up the loop and do another double crochet. So we're going to do that across 14 times. So we're going to have 14 X's. So skip the stitch, double crochet, go back to the skip stitch and double crochet. So skip the stitch, go into the second stitch, double crochet, cross over front, go back to the skip stitch, go in and then double crochet. Skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop and double crochet, cross over front, go back to the skip stitch, pull up the loop and do your double crochet. Oops. And we're doing that just across, like I said, the 14 times so that we can have the same pattern across and then we'll do it to the last four stitches again and then we will do another back post double crochet and then just three regular double crochets to complete the border on that on this row so i'm just skipping the stitch doing my double crochet crossing back over front to the skip stitch and doing a double crochet in that skip a stitch double crochet cross over front into the skip stitch and double crochet again skip a stitch double crochet cross over front into the next stitch double crochet okay and this is just giving us that nice x pattern um, that we'll be able to enjoy in our af again so skip the stitch go into the next stitch cross over front into the skip stitch double crochet 
skip a stitch, double crochet, cross over front to the sti skipped stitch, and then double crochet. Okay, we're coming up to the end again. So we need to do, right on this stitch right here, you can see that's going to be our back post double crochet. So we are going to go in, remember we're going to go behind it and up. So here's our post. So we want to go up to the right side of the post and then into the left side of the post. And then yarn over and then pull up, giving us our three hooks. I'll go over that again. We're going to yarn over. We've got our post right here, so we want to go behind though. So we're going to enter our hook right to the right side of that post. We're going to go over top of that post and out the back side. And then we're going to yarn over, pull up the loop, giving us our three loops, and then do our double crochet. And then we're going to do three regular double crochet here. So one, and Two, and then on the chain three, you're just going to do a double crochet in the top chain right here. So we're just going to, oops, do our double crochet in there, which gives us our border. Okay, so we're going to now turn our work and chain three. You can see our border is coming along nicely. You can see this bottom ridge that we created by working in the back loops. And then we have our two rows of border. Okay, we're going to go ahead and chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. We're going to do a double crochet in the next stitch, and then another double crochet in the next stitch, and then we're going to do a front post double crochet. So we're just alternating the front post and the back post double crochets here to make this ridge pop out. Um, let me see if I can turn this. You can see it kind of floats above the others, which gives it just a nice little border right there. So we're going to do the front post. Remember, when we're working in the front, we come towards the front, around the back post, and up the other side of it. So that's how we do the front post. The back post, we come through the back. And then we do the double crochet. And then we're going to work the pattern across. So we're going to skip a stitch. So we're going to skip that stitch, work into the next stitch, do our double crochet. Then we're going to cross over front and go back to the skip stitch and do a double crochet. We're just going to work this pattern oops, um, for the neck up till row 27. So we'll have a total of 23 rows of this and then the four rows of the single crochets at the bottom. So I'm going to let you just work on this pattern. We're going to just work across and do the front post, and when we switch it, we'll do the three double crochet and then the back post. And then we'll work the pattern across to the last four stitches and then do the back post and then the double crochet. That's for the next row. And then you'll turn your work and then you'll work the three stitch. well, you'll chain three and work the two double crochet, do the front post double crochet, and then you'll do the pattern across. And so I'll let you guys catch up with me and then I'll jump back on. Hi, welcome back. I'm so excited to be back with you to finish off the excess section. Let's go ahead and we're going to get started with it. I just finished my row 27. You can see that doing the front post and back post crochet has created just this nice ridge here. It just separates the side border and the main pattern that looks just great. Okay, so just finished row 27. All right, so I just finished row 27. So we're going to just do four rows of single crochet. This first row is gonna be a little bit different, but we're gonna chain one. I've gotta turn my work here. And then we're going to work three single crochets. So go ahead and go into the first stitch right there and do one single crochet. Go into the second another single crochet and then go into the third stitch and do a, the last single crochet. Okay, now what we're going to do is work in the front loops. Remember we talked about how right here is the, sorry, so here right is the back loop which makes this one right here the front loop. So we're going to go ahead and just work in the front loop for the next 30 stitches. So we're going to um, go right into this front loop and do a single crochet 
And that's going to leave that back ridge um, there for us to be able to utilize for the top border. Um, if you remember on the bottom, you can see here how we left that front ridge for the border. Um, now we're leaving that back ridge to be the border for this, for the top within this section. And so we're just going to single crochet across in that front. You can see I'm leaving that back for that back loop, making that night. Oops, sorry. So you can see that I'm leaving that back loop right there, making a nice um, border, and it's just going to make it look pretty and polish it off. So we're just going to continue here, working in the back front loop. Sorry. So again, the front loop is just that loop that's closest to you. Just makes it nice and easy. You can see when you work only in one loop, it pulls it up a little bit, which is fine. You can see in the bottom where it just kind of settled right back down. So it still looks good. It's nice. Um, everything's kind of got a plan and a place when doing this. And this is the only time that I know of that I'll probably have you just work in one loop unless I have you work, or not in one loop, but where you just put one loop over your hook instead of the two. Because remember, I've talked about having, always having two loops unless otherwise indicated, and this is one of those otherwise times. So it just provides that nice look. And we're going to go across until there's three stitches left. Oops. Sometimes it's tricky getting in just one loop. I'm used to always going into the two, so whenever I switch what I'm doing and working straight in those back loops, it always throws you just a little bit. Oops. All right, one more in that back loop. And then we're going to just do one single crochet in the next three stitches, just regular single crochets with the two loops over top. So one, two, and then in the top of the chain three, there's three. So go ahead and chain one. We need to turn our work here. And we're just going to work just a single crochet across into each stitch now for the next three rows, just get finishing off this border making it look good so we're going to go into the first stitch single crochet and single crochet across so that's how we're going to work this and like i said this is going to be for the next three rows and then we're going to tie it off and we're going to go ahead and join it with the um, treble texture section and i will do that with you live so that you guys can see how to do that and we will have the first two sections of our blanket complete, which is really exciting, and we can have them hooked together. So I'm really excited to see this coming together already, and it's just been a couple of weeks. It's fun to see projects come together and to see how they're going to look and how they're going to feel. Okay, so earlier we were talking about the National Crochet Month and some ideas for it. A couple of things that I want to do is first I want to continue to create these sections for you guys to be able to show you how to or to create this afghan together. I think it's fun to be able to teach and to be able to grow that way. Um, also I would like to offer if you guys are struggling with one of the stitches if you're struggling with the front post or the back post stitches please leave me a comment. I would love to um, just make a quick video, a technique video for you, and to be able to go over any technique that you guys might need. Um, I would love to be able to help you out that way. And like I said, just leave a comment and then I will get to work on that right away so that you guys can continue progressing in your Afghan sections. So we're coming up to the second row of single crochets. We have two more rows after this. We're going to chain one and turn our work. Okay. 
and then we're going to just single crochet across again. I have to remember to keep my tension a little bit looser because on, with the video I tend to tighten it up a little bit and I don't want the tension to be different throughout because when you do that what happens is it makes it, if I do this tighter then it'll make this end tighter and it'll be more narrow and not look as good so I have to remember to keep my tension even throughout the whole pattern so that's what I'm trying to work on as I create these single crochets okay so you can see here I just split my yarn I went into um, some of the bottom stitch when you do that pull out your crochet you don't want to split yarn like that eventually that'll work its way back down in but take out your yarn and go ahead and just redo that stitch you can see I didn't get this so here you can see that that's up there so it's going to be a little more tricky so I'm going to try to just sneak above it and not catch it which I keep doing keep catching one little piece of it so we're going to there we go so now I'm not catching any of it and that snagged my yarn just a little bit you can kind of work it down in um, but try not to split your yarn it weakens it and makes it so that it will break quicker so that's one thing to look out for as you're crocheting so I told you one of the things I wanted to do this month to celebrate another thing I want to do is I do want to join the um, Crochet Guild of America's um, crochet along they're do like I said yes or the other day they are making sorry I have to look and the button-up neck cozy that's what they're making so they're making the button-up neck cozy and I thought it would be fun to just join in on the crochet group and jump on and see what they're doing and make my own maybe throw my own little twist to it my own little colors um, see what I come up with next I want to um, create a new pattern that I found it's um, called the sorry the champagne cables hat I thought it would be fun to work on some cables um, the hat pattern um, is a free pattern actually and it was um, I'll leave the pattern in the comments below um, the link to it but it's a free pattern um, from it's from furlscrochet.com but the pattern was actually created by Tamara Kelly from Moogly. Okay, I just finished off that row. So we've got our, you can see we've got one and two. I'm busy talking, I forget where I'm at. So we've got, this is our third row. So we have one more row to finish this off. So we're just gonna chain one and we're gonna single crochet across. This is our last row here. Okay, so anyways, the cables hat is it's a free pattern. It was created by um, Tamara Kelly from Moogly, but it's on the furlscrochet.com site. And I thought it would be fun to just work with some cables and to have some fun with that. I've done cables in the past, but it's been a little bit. Um, I've been in school lately, so I put my crochet aside a little bit. I haven't done it as much as I've wanted to, and I'm just picking it back up. So. I'm going to look into some cables this week, this month, play around with that. And then, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So I'm excited to work on those. All right, so we're coming up about the middle of this row. We're almost done. Is everybody excited to be done with this section? I know I am. It's going to be fun to combine it with the other and to see my blanket come together. So I'm super excited. It's going to be great. Okay, just a few more stitches to go and we're going to be done with this part. Remember not to split your yarn as you're creating your stitches. Um, keep your yarn nice and strong. Okay, so we're coming across to this last little bit. One more stitch. And we are done with that section. Doesn't it look beautiful? I love it. I love seeing my work come together and seeing the final piece. Okay, so now what we're going to do 
instead of just cutting this off short, you know, like it within the six inches, we are going to actually pull it out. So that we're going to use this to um, connect to it. So I'm going to pull it out probably, let's see, at least two lengths worth of the of my section. So about two feet worth, maybe just a little bit more so that I can have some tying off. So I'm going to cut it off here. And this is where the scissors come into play. Nice scissor action, right? Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the yarn through to fasten this off. So I'm just going to, like I'm doing the chain up, but I'm just going to pull the yarn all the way through. And because it's a long piece of yarn, it's going to take a little bit of time. As the yarn keeps coming, 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 and it's tied off. So our piece is done, it's tied off. Now we're going to pull out the tapestry needle and we're going to go ahead and put the yarn in it. I don't know if you have a tricky way to, if this is tricky for you, but I got it. Okay, so I've got the yarn in my hook. Now I'm going to get my treble texture section and what I'm going to do you can see that this is the front side of this piece the treble texture doesn't really have a front side you can use either side for the front but you want the front sides always facing when you do this I've chose to do a back stitch to join it so what we're going to do in order to join it with the back stitch sorry it takes a second to get this set up is okay so you put the two corners together here. I'm going to switch this around. Sorry about that. Just makes it a little bit easier for me. Okay, so I've got the two corners together and I'm going to actually be working because this side has all single crochets. So I'm going to be kind of paying attention to that side more. Um, I want to to um, insert first on the white side because I'm using the white crochet yarn and that will make it so that it, this side will be the messier side which is fine because the white will blend in with the white and we're going to go down to the second row so here's kind of the top and we're going to come down to this second row right here so we're going to come here to the second sorry so we're going to come down here to the second row come underneath that row we're going to come in and then we're going to back stitch and I actually wanted to come in the row before so let's go ahead and just take that back out remember as you're doing this you don't want to split the yarn you want to keep it nice so we're going to actually come in just below this first one so we're going to come in there. So just below this last row right here. Then we're going to back stitch over top of that and just come into this last loop here. And you can grab this other loop up too just to give it more stability. And then come into the top of this row and try not to split the yarn. So I'm not splitting the yarn there. So just come into that top part of that row. And that's going to give us our first stitch. And you can see that it um, creates a nice little bump of white over here. And then this side, we're going to actually skip down to this next row um, right here. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer stitch. And you're going to try to just keep two loops over top. This will keep the pattern or the seam smaller. So just do the two loops over the top of yarn, two loops over the top of yarn, and then come down here. You can see on this side, See how this is going to be a longer strand here versus that little bump on the other side. That's why you want to um, have the white facing towards you so that it makes it look a little bit nicer. And then we're going to come up, go under two pieces of yarn here. Oops. Go under the two pieces of yarn. And then come back here, go under the two pieces of yarn. Try not to split your yarn. And then pull that through. This is called the back stitch. Um, I chose to do the back stitch. It does leave a little bit of a seam, which I think looks great as a border on the back side. So you can really keep have your blanket reversible and it just gives that a nice border. 
Okay, so we're going to come down to here. You can see this next row here. So we're going to go under two. So you can see I have two little strands there. And then come under two of this next row. Pull this through. And then we're going to come back on ourselves. Go under those two and under those two and pull through. And again, try not to split your yarn. Okay, so the next row is down here. So we're going to come down there. We're going to go under two things of yarn here. Go under two loops here. Make sure you're on the bottom side of that. You can just kind of go into that hole right there. Um, so pull that through. And then go back up and through. Try not to split the yarn. And pull it. So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to work this down, um, continuing to go down. So look down for the next stitch that indicates how far you need to go down on this side. So go down under the two, go into the space right there, pull the yarn through, and then go ahead and jump over that stitch just to tie it in there, and then come back through. You don't want to split the yarn, but go under two loops. And so this is just what we're going to do. The back stitch is more of a sturdy stitch. I thought about um, using the mattress stitch, which leaves less of a border, but I thought it would be fun to have a kind of a border, and I also felt like it was just a sturdier stitch to work with, and so it just made it a little bit uh, more durable for your project and made it so that it um, will last without it coming unthreaded. So. I always hate when my projects fall apart because I didn't tie them together good enough. So that's why I opted to use this back stitch. So again, we're going to go under two, go into the hole below the stitch right there. So you can see how each um, section has kind of a hole. That would be where you went in to make that stitch for the next row so we're just going to go in there we're going to jump over that row come back through go through two loops on this side and pull through and we're going to work this all the way down so we're going to just continue working this go down to the next stitch right there so here i'm going to turn this so you can see so you can see what i'm my little bumps right here that i'm getting on each row and you can see I'm going to do one here, I'm going to do one here, here, and here, and all the way down, just the next stitch. And it just leaves this nice little white bump. It's not overly done. It's not um, too distracting from the pattern. It just makes a nice little even bump there. So we're going to come down here, go through the two loops, and go into the hole of that bottom stitch pull it through and then go through the hole above the stitch and then under two pieces of yarn on this side and do it and you can see this is given just a nice um, ridge here that can be used if you want to have the side up you can if you want to have it down you can it just gives it a nice little border there as well so kind of like the ridge that we did on the um, excess section so as you continue that, just continue going in, going down and making sure you're underneath that other pattern. Go under the two, go into that spot, pull through, go into this up here, come through, make sure you're not splitting any thread and then pull through. Just continue that all the way down. It may take just a little bit of time, um, but it's going to be worth it. We're going to have a beautiful blanket in the end, a beautiful afghan to be able to utilize. So I'm just going to go under into that hole. Oops, I'm splitting some yarn on that side. Got to make sure not to do that. And then come in here, right there, and pull through. Okay, I've actually got a section finished, so I'm going to show you that. Just keep doing that all the way down, 
And then when you get to the end, just weave in your end just like you would a regular piece of end of yarn and just weave it in to make it look good. And yeah, you're going to, your pattern's going to look like this. You can see there's just a nice flat seam on this side. You can see the two borders coming together here and then the patterns coming off from them. And then if you flip it over, you can see that there's this ridge. Um, I'm going to hold it up. There's the ridge for you to see. It's just a nice little ridge. It's not too big, but that gives it a little bit of texture and a little bit of section on this back side. So that's how it's going to look. You can see that we just finished it off down here at the bottom. I finished it to each corner. So each corner should be flush with the other corner. And then you just weave in your end and voila, you're done. So thank you for joining me today with this fun and easy crochet and for combining the two sections. Don't they look beautiful? I'm so excited to get this done and to be able to move forward and to progress. So thank you for joining me today.